So we want to find a linear model. The situation is we have some data, we think it might line up, and we want to find uh, a relationship, and that relationship might be linear. The only way to do that is to plot the points to check to see if linear model is a good idea. So let's try and plot this. We'll need a y-axis. And we'll need an x-axis. And we'll have to decide on the scale. And that involves just looking at the points. So here we want to go from 2005 to 2015. So they're 10 apart. And that's not going to be too bad here. So I think what I would do is at the, uh, the bottom here, I would let the this value right here be 2005, and then this would be 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And again, the 15 is really 2015. And then here, I gotta get from 7.35 to 9.47, so, they're about a little over two apart. And we want to spread that out a little bit. So maybe we could go by quarters. So let's say we make this right here seven. So we have a broken axis there. And quarters. So one, two, three, four. This can be eight. One, two, three, four. This can be nine. And we're past nine here for the y value. So one, two, three, four. That up there can be 10. And then we just start uh, estimating where the points are. So this right here would be 7.25. So 7.35 should be a little above that. And then this would be 7.5. And 2006 should be 6.3, so a little above that. And then 7.93 is almost 8 in 2007, so that would be around here. So we just do our best to plot the points. 2008, we're at 8.5 roughly. So, oops, uh, let's say I missed something. 2008, so 6, 7, 8, oh, there we go. So just above 8. And then there's the eight and a half, which is way up here. And another eight and a half, which would be up there. And then 8.67 about here. Nine is gonna be 9.04. So I'm at that point right there. And then 2013 is 9.2 roughly. So that's 9.25, so maybe about there. And then 9.32 would be a little higher. And 9.47 is just under 9.5. So that's 2015. Okay, so I think my points are all right. And, and then I want to find a line through there. Notice the points don't perfectly line up. A uh, computer would do a slightly better job than I did by hand, but Doing it on paper is a good idea. So let's see. So now I want to kind of draw a line through there. So if I drew my line through the first and last points, which is often done, I can see I kind of almost touch a couple of my points, but there's a whole bunch of points above. So I'm not sure that's a great idea, but it would work. So I could pick the first and the last point to make that graph. But if I grab this and move it up a little, I'm kind of following the trend, but now I have some points above and some points below. And maybe picking the second point and the second to last point might be a good idea too. Now, I can't just pick any two points. So for example, if I had picked, uh, say, these two points right here, then I would get this horizontal line. And that definitely doesn't follow this trend. If I picked maybe the third point and then what, four, 
five, six, the seventh point, would that have been okay? Let's see. So you just kind of graph it on paper and then grab a straight edge and draw some lines. All right, so if I grabbed those two, I don't think that would be a very good fit either. If I, oops, if I pick that up and move it. See, that doesn't seem to fit the trend exactly either. So you just kind of kind of play around here. So it seemed like to me using the first and last maybe or the second and second to last was a pretty good fit. So let's just for fun go with the second and then second to last point. So I'm just gonna extend that a little and then move it. And again on paper, I would just be playing around with a line. So that's not too bad. So I'm gonna pick this point here and then this point here. And to make this problem a little easier, instead of letting X be 2005 and 2006 and 2007, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let X equal the number of years after 2000. Because then I can say this is year five and six, seven, eight, nine, ten right, up to year 15. So I think that works pretty well. And then I'll just leave the Y values the way I want. So then my slope for this situation is gonna be to find the rise, which is 919 minus 763 divided by 13 minus six. And so sometimes when I decide to relabel a certain variable, I might actually rewrite what it is. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oops, I picked the wrong number. Well, let's fix that. Let's see. Um, what if I did pick that point right there instead? I would make the line a little steeper. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Let's explore that anyway. Come on, there you are. So if I made the line a little steeper like that, you know, that's not too bad either. Okay, let's go with that accidental pick. So, I got the second point and the third to last point. And so that's 919 minus 763 and 13 minus six. All right. So then I have to make those calculations and I'll trust my mental calculation for the numerator. So let's whip out a calculator. So what is 9.19? Oops, 0.63. And remember, the calculator just does what you tell it. So hopefully you tell it to do the right thing. So I get a rise of 1.56. And my run, uh, 13 minus six is seven. So I need to divide that by seven next. It looks like my slope is about 0.22-ish. These numbers have, the dollar amount is more important than the year in this case. So they have three places of accuracy, three significant figures. So 0.223, let's say, is the slope. So rounding, I use the squiggly equals 0 0.223 to three significant figures. Now to get the equation for this line, I'm looking for something like y equals mx plus b. And I just found m. Next, I need to find b. And to do that, what we'll do is we'll plug in the slope we just found and one of the points 
and that'll allow us to solve for the y-intercept. All right, so let's pick a point. We can pick the uh, first point right here. So y is 7.63 when m is 0 0.223 and x is 13. No, I picked the first one, 6. And then I have plus b. So again, what I did is I plugged in a y and an x and the slope. Now I can solve for b. So I got to do that multiplication. So calculator time. 0 0.223 times 6 is 1.338. So now I have 7.63 equals 1.338. So I can subtract that to the other side. So I'll minus 1.338 here. And there. So that goes away. And what happens is after that subtraction, I have B. So B is whatever that difference is right there. So 7.63. So now I want 7.63 minus 1.338. So I get a y-intercept of 6.292. So now I have all the pieces from a model. So I think this red line right here for y, which is the minimum wage in Washington, I think that y equals 0 0.223 times x, which is the years after 2000, plus 6.292. So that was kind of complicated. And it's possible I made a mistake anywhere in here. So let's just double check. Now I plugged in this point to find the y-intercept. So I'm going to double check by plugging in this x value to see what I get for uh, the y value. So what I'm going to do next is check with x equals 13. And so that means I need to calculate what is y when x is 13. So 0 0.223 times 13 plus 6.292. Calculator time. So uh, let's see, 0 0.223 times 13 plus 6.292. That looks right, and I get 9.191 when I was hoping for 9.19. Hey, that's pretty good, I'm close. Now, it's not gonna match every single data point because this red line does not hit every single data point. So for example, when I plug in say 5, 6, 2007, I'm gonna be a little bit more off. Uh, so let's just double check that one to see if I'm a little more off, but in the ballpark. So same calculation, but a seven. So 0 0.223 times 7 plus 6.292. And I get 7.85-ish. So 7.85 is a little under because it's supposed to be 7.93. So again, these points kind of line up, but they're a little scattered. Uh, but I can apply a little model that approximates this trend here. And so then I can make future predictions. 
or I can estimate values within. Now, future predictions are dangerous because I don't know if this trend is gonna to continue to be linear. It could be it kind of curves uh, slightly downward instead. And we just don't know the future, but we can make uh, predictions within this time range. So I can estimate if there was a change between 2008 and 2009 about what it would be. And I can predict a little bit above and I can look a little bit before for an estimate. But predicting too far beyond the data or before the data uh, can be dangerous if I don't have more information. What does more information mean? Well, sometimes it's more points, but otherwise it's, it's kind of a reason why the Y values might be related to the X values. Um, and that's a whole nother story. So uh, correlation is the idea of, uh, does it look like a good fit? And causation is, what's the reason for that fit? And I'm looking at uh, not causation, but correlation here. So I hope this was helpful in finding slope and y-intercept of data that is roughly linear. Have a good day, do good math.